It is the citadel of justice in America. It commands respect not because of its enormous power, but because of its reverence for the law, because its integrity is supposed to be unimpeachable beyond the political winds of Washington, and because of its fairness in all matters of truth and justice. It is the United States Department of Justice, and he is the head, the top law enforcement officer in the country. And this week, fury as more facts come out regarding the Attorney General's personal role in what many regard as an unprecedented intrusion on the freedom of the press. Criticisms from both sides of the aisle, calls for his resignation, his impeachment, his firing. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. So should Eric Holder resign? It's probably not going to happen. Should he be fired? The president says it's not going to happen. On May 16th, the president was asked whether he has uh, confidence in the attorney general, and, and he answered in the affirmative. Is that still the case? Does he still absolutely. have confidence in this attorney general? He absolutely does, yes. Now, we already know the Obama administration promotes and rewards those in lockstep with them, like Susan Rice and her video vignette, Victoria Nuland and those pesky Benghazi talking points, and Lois Lerner, that IRS queen, who admittedly doesn't much know about math, but another truth twister who's taking a summer vacation, folks, on our dime because the White House won't go through the trouble of firing her. Actually, only the little people get fired or demoted, like Greg Hicks, the man who desperately called for military backup in Benghazi. So what should happen to Holder? I have an idea. Eric Holder should be indicted. The facts. It all started when the Department of Justice targeted a Fox News reporter for simply reporting the news. Holder approved spying on him, likening his reporter actions to criminal activity and referring to him as an aider and a better, a co-conspirator for reporting what an Obama staffer told him. Now a little primer here. There is a long-standing principle of American jurisprudence, a fundamental linchpin of our Bill of Rights. The First Amendment, the freedom of the press. The law is clear. If you want information as a prosecutor, like a reporter's phone records and emails, you give them notice, and the two of you go to court and you duke it out. But not Eric Holder. When asked about this at a congressional hearing, he denied doing any such thing. With regard to the potential prosecution of the press for the disclosure of material, that is not something that um, I've ever been involved in, heard of, um, or would think would be a wise policy. We now know that was not the truth. And in panic mode, Holder and his boss decide it's time to meet with the press, the very people whose rights they've trampled on. Now, Eric, they say you feel sorrowful. And so you invite the press to a tea party, most of whom declined your invitation. And at this party, you want to talk to them off the record, just in case you say something you don't want quoted and don't want to be accountable for. And so you say, so the press can tell you what guidelines there should be when prosecutors investigate journalists. Don't you run the world's largest law office, 10,000 lawyers? Aren't there 200 years of case law, precedent, and legal treatises on the free press and the First Amendment? Remember Walter Zenger? And by the way, isn't your boss, the president, a constitutional lawyer? What don't you understand about the First Amendment? And you want to meet with the press? Why? to talk about how prosecutors like you shouldn't be allowed to do what you yourself decided to do. You did it. What, were you having an out-of-body experience? You did what you did, what you now say you shouldn't be allowed to do after you originally denied doing it. But when caught, you now say, hey, I've always wanted that media shield law to prevent you from doing it. Now you realize, Eric, you're saying Please help me figure out a way to protect you from people like me. 
You didn't stop yourself. You could have relied on the law. You could have chosen to stop. It's called prosecutorial discretion. I know you know that one. Instead, you go beyond what any administration or attorney general in the history of this country has ever done in an unprecedented seizure of press records. And you lied about it. This is not Iran. This is not North Korea. You know what the guidelines are. That's why you kept judge shopping after two judges refused to go along with an order that would violate the Constitution that you swore to uphold. But that third time, it's a charm. You finally found a judge who would agree with your plan. Now, you're all talk about an independent judge to review any such applications in the future when you had the nerve to judge shop until you got the right judge. Really? I'm not even going to go into the wholesale seizure of the AP records where you said you didn't have to give notice because of national security, which we both know is hogwash. It was 2012. Your boss was in the middle of a tight presidential election. The story was about al-Qaeda. Your boss wanted to trumpet his own narrative. We know how that one goes. But when the AP scooped him by one day, it was time to target the AP. The fury today is palpable. The calls for a special prosecutor are deafening. But you won't appoint a special prosecutor. You'll just investigate yourself. But what I want to know is which self? The one who says what you say or the one who says what or, or who does what you do? And by the way, you want to know what the press thinks? Just read the newspapers. Why don't you admit that you're trying to make nice with them? What's the point of even meeting with them? They can't change the law. They're not Congress. Come on. You just want to make some new friends. Hey, maybe they'll say something nice. After all, the 2014 midterm elections are coming up. And maybe you can influence the press who's now investigating you. And by the way, Eric, some of the press you invited were your targets. Have you ever met with the target of a potential criminal investigation? I know I wouldn't. No prosecutor worth his or her salt meets with someone he or, sh or she is accused of wrongdoing for a kumbaya moment with tea and crumpets. But who knows? Maybe this could be a teaching moment. As you said, this is an opportunity for the department to consider how to strike the right balance between the interests of law enforcement and freedom of the press. Is anyone out there tired of the Obama administration's teaching moments? We already knew the consulate in Benghazi didn't meet minimum Inman standards or the standards of the 1999 Accountability Review Board after the bombing in Tanzania and Kenya. But after the murder of Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others, it was time for another teaching moment with another Accountability Review Board appointed who didn't bother to question its most important witness, the person who appointed them. So now we need a teaching moment on media sensitivity? Really? You now want to safeguard the media against an overly intrusive prosecutor? What are you going to do? One-up the Constitution? We've already got a First Amendment. How about you stop ignoring it? How about you stop judge shopping? How about you stop patronizing the media that until now you've proven you could have cared less about? How about you stop secretly and surreptitiously seizing records and stop likening a reporter's job to criminal conduct and calling them aiders and abettors and criminal co-conspirators? You present yourself as a liberal, freedom-loving, First Amendment, equal rights and equal justice kind of guy. In truth, you're a political operative whose actions are unprecedented in the history of this country. But this latest scandal is not the first time you've disregarded the law. It was your department that sent assault rifles to the Mexican cartels used to murder innocent civilians and a border patrol and ICE agent. And so for your actions, I believe the following is in order. An indictment, one that contains the following charges. Count one, perjury, for the May 15th statement before the House Judiciary that you, Eric Holder, know nothing about the potential prosecution of the press, that it's not something you've ever been involved in when in truth. You not only knew the statement was not true, but you actually personally approved the seeking of a warrant for those records. Count two. 
knowingly making a false statement in relation to a matter within the jurisdiction of the legislative branch for that same testimony, although here with an enhanced sentence for obstruction. Count three, for your role in Fast and Furious, aiding and abetting a false statement in a letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee dated February 4th, 2011, by your deputy, Ron White, stating unequivocally that there was no gun walking and no weapons sent across the Mexican border, which statement was also a lie and you had to admit after. Count four, misprision of a felony for your knowledge when you had a duty to stop the gun running to Mexico and your failure to do so. Count five, perjury for lying to Congress that you first heard about Fast and Furious in late April of 2011 when even the president admits he knew about it before that. Count six, conspiracy, allowing for the use of and providing guns to the Mexican cartel during a drug trafficking offense in furtherance of a drug conspiracy. I started by saying that the United States Department of Justice is the citadel of truth in America, and it commands respect. It deserves a leader who understands, respects, and reveres the law. It deserves a leader who has the integrity, the intellect, and the commitment to advance the cause of justice. You've already been held in contempt of Congress. The arrogance, the lies, the double standards are both embarrassing and beneath us. The American people can no longer afford so many missteps in our citadel of American justice. Mr. Attorney General, it's time for you to go.